welcome to week 6 uh, second lecture so in the last uh, lecture we saw how to represent preferences over a risky asset uh, for all, uh, from all the things that we have done up till now to figure out uh, optimal choice uh, of the consumer maybe it's from uh, current consumption and future consumption or it is about preferences over different kinds of assets two things we always need uh one is the preferences and the second thing is uh, some representation of affordability which is a budget constraint so let's figure out how to represent budget constraint for risky assets so let's take a simple case suppose there are two assets uh there is a risk free asset uh for whose rate of return we are going to uh call it as rf risk free asset is basically the rate of return doesn't uh vary at all so think of it as for example a 3 month government security uh that would be uh that is uh most often referred to as a risk free rate let's say that the risky stocks rate of return is given by m uh, with a subscript s if state s occurs with a probability pi s now this should remind you of the state contingent commodities that we talked about last time so when we talk about an asset's value and uh, there is we talk about what are the different kinds of values that an asset might take and in what states that uh, value might occur and with what probabilities so getting together all these ideas the risky stocks mean rate of return is going to be uh, a similar concept as we've used before uh, the expected value so ms is basically the value of an asset in state s you list all the possible states for the asset going from 1 to capital s and multiply each possible value of the asset in the given state by the probability of that state occurring once you take this products and sum them over all the states then you basically get the mean rate of return for the risky stock okay so uh, basically the mean rate of return for a risky stock is the weighted average of all the possible values that the asset can take in different states where the weights are the probability uh, of that value probability of that state occurring now typically uh, when you talk about a bundle uh, we are going to talk about some units of risky stock and some units of risk free asset in your portfolio the question is to figure out what is the optimal combination of risky stock and risk free asset uh, that a particular investor is going to have so let x be the fraction of wealth used to buy the risky stock now given x the portfolio's average rate of return is given by this equation it's a simple equation you have a risk free rate of return that would be multiplied by the total amount of money that you have invested in risk free assets plus uh you have the mean rate of return on the stocks multiplied by the proportion of your money uh put in stocks so rx is kind of the weighted average of these two rates mean rate of return on the stock and risk free rate where the weights are uh, the the proportion of the total uh, money available invested in that particular asset so uh, you must have noticed that in all uh, these applications wherever we are talking about uh, average or a mean we always have it as a weighted average where either the weights are probabilities of those particular values occurring or states occurring or they are weights like this where we uh, basically multiply uh, the random variable by the proportion of total money invested in that particular asset all right few simple things from this equation if x is equal to 0 rx is going to be equal to rf 
because all your assets are going to be in risk-free assets. If x is equal to 1, which means you don't have anything in the risk-free asset, then the rate of return uh, on your portfolio is nothing but the rate of return, uh, the mean rate of return on the stock. Now clearly, because the stock is risky and risk is a bad, uh, if you remember from the way we represented the preferences, for stock to be purchased, we must have the mean rate of return on the stock greater than the risk-free rate of return. So uh, it is clear that the portfolio's expected rate of return rises with X or the proportion of money invested in stock. Now let's figure out what is the portfolio's rate of return variance. Now intuitively, it's quite simple. The risk-free rate is called risk-free because the, that rate doesn't vary at all. It is the same irrespective of whatever state uh, that you are talking about. But the stock's value changes uh, according to the state that we have. So there is a, quite a lot of variability there. In a portfolio where you have one asset which doesn't vary and the other asset whose value varies a lot, the whole of uh, the variance for the portfolio is going to determine by how much of money uh, you have put into the, uh, into the asset whose value is variable. That's exactly what we see here. So I'm going to skip all the steps and concentrate on this term here. So what essentially we are saying is that the rate of return uh, variance on the portfolio is given by the proportion of uh, your money invested in stocks multiplied by the variance of the mean return on the stocks. So because the risk free rate doesn't vary, all the variance in the average rate of uh, return that we have on the uh, portfolio is given by the variance in the stock's rate of return. Obviously, you know uh, by now, variance, uh, standard deviation is the square root of the variance. And so you can write it basically like that. Again, simple applications. If you don't have uh, any proportion of your money in uh, put in stocks, then uh, obviously you are, uh, there is no variation in the average rate of return. You're just going to get the risk-free rate. Here, uh, if you put some money, uh, if you put all of your money in the stock, then uh, your standard deviation is just uh, the standard deviation of uh, the stock, uh, stock's mean rate of return. So risk rises with X. So the more, port the more uh, stock you have in your portfolio, higher is the risk. So let's see uh, how we can represent this. So if you do not have any risk at all, which is all your assets are in risk uh, are in risk free assets, so you start at this point here. So that's the y intercept that you are talking about. If you put all of your money in the stock, so you was uh, you was uh, vary or your risk. Uh, is denoted by the standard deviation of the mean rate of return on uh, the stock, then you're going to get RM as the rate of return on your portfolio. So these we have two points. So these are like kind of two intercepts that we have or two endpoints of this portfolio that we got. Once you join them, you basically get uh, the budget line. What is the slope of the budget line? The slope of the budget line again is rise over run. So uh, you basically think about what is the difference. So what is the rise? The rise we are going to calculate from RF. So the rise is going to be RM minus RF and the run is basically change in the standard deviation of the mean rate of return. So that's your denominator. So rise over run. So RM minus RF divided by sigma M is the slope of the budget line. So now we have preferences. We have the budget line. We put these things together to figure out what is uh, the combination uh, that will be chosen optimally.
before we go ahead uh, notice that the slope is also the price of risk relative to mean return so it basically tells you what is the additional compensation that is required if the mean rate uh, if the standard deviation increases by one unit so where is the most preferred return risk combination simple so you choose the point where uh, the indifference curve the highest indifference curve is tangent to the budget line so that's your utility maximization the uh, the green point or the blue point uh, is basically the uh, it gives you the combination of how much uh, you are putting in the risk-free asset and how much you're putting in the stock so here there's a combination of that so what does it mean in terms of uh, slopes at this particular point the slope of the indifference curve here is uh, equal to the slope of the budget line. We know that the slope of the budget line is this. We also know that the slope of the indifference curve is the marginal rate of substitution. We have calculated what the marginal rate of substitution is. It is basically the ratio of marginal utilities. How much is the change in utility if uh, the variance, uh, the standard deviation goes up by one unit divided by how much is the change in utility if the mean rate of return goes up by one unit. Let's see. Now let's say that we have two assets, two risky assets, and we have to choose between them. Suppose a new risky asset appears with a mean rate of return, let's say Ry, which is greater than Rm. And of course we know that if it's a risky asset, it has a higher rate of return, it means that it is going to have a higher variance. Or higher risk uh, measured by standard deviation here which is square root of variance so now the question is which asset is going to be preferred let's look at the diagram again before we go let's ascertain what we're talking about here clearly the budget line on which rm uh, on which stock m is available uh, will have this slope and the budget line on which stock y is available will have this slope and the slope is going to be higher uh, for the Y asset than the, than the M asset because the Y asset is basically risky, riskier and therefore requires a higher compensation uh, for taking that risk. So this is where we started. This is the original budget line. And now we have this uh, asset which is right up here. It has a higher rate of return but also comes with a higher risk. So now what we do is we draw a line from RF to join this line, which gives us a new budget line. Obviously, you know that this will cut through the original indifference curve. So none of these points are going to be optimal anymore because you can reach a higher indifference curve now. So the option is going to uh, be somewhere this point, which also implies that the amount invested uh, in the risky securities is going to go up, which also means that the average, uh, the variance uh, of the portfolio is also, or the risk of the portfolio is going to go up, but so does the rate of return on the portfolio or the mean. So higher mean rate of return and higher risk chosen in this case. All right, before we go ahead, uh, solve quiz number two uh, so that uh, you are clear with all the concepts that we have talked about right now and then go on to the next video thank you